Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. One day the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, and so he gave his disciples a model prayer we know today as the Lord's Prayer. While many of us recite the prayer verbatim, the prayer is also useful as a model, reminding us of the kinds of things that should be on our hearts and minds. Jesus put the most important idea first. Our heart's greatest desire should be God's purpose to establish a kingdom of righteousness, goodness, and truth on earth that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and that God should take the necessary steps to vindicate himself and restore his reputation. Notice what the Lord's Prayer does not ask. We are not asking God to become holy. His holiness is certainly not an issue among those who love him, respect him, and worship him. In truth, God is holy. This fact is without controversy among all those who believe the Holy Scriptures whether we're talking about the Hebrew Scriptures or the Christian Scriptures. But this is precisely why we pray that God would restore His holy name. By His own admission, God declares that at some point in the past, His reputation was tarnished. And because of this, God's name is blasphemed all over the world, He says. Those who love God and love the truth want the truth about God to come to light. God's enemies should not be allowed to profane His name and only God's patient endurance and forbearance currently keeps him from setting things right. Nonetheless, according to Jesus, the restoration of God's name and the elimination of blasphemy should be our primary concern. This is a line out of the prophet Malachi. The people of God, those whom God counted as his own people, profaned his altar and his table and treated him with disrespect. In order to discipline his people, he allowed her enemies to attack her, which he admits was the result of his wrath. We pick up this idea in the prophetic writings of Ezekiel. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel was living in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their way before me was like the uncleanness of a woman in her impurity. Therefore I poured out my wrath on them for the blood which they had shed on the land, because they had defiled it with their idols. I also scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed throughout the lands. According to their ways and their deeds, I judged them. Isaiah describes this in terms of a father's discipline, whereby the child is wounded from head to toe, bloody, and not a place remains on the body for another welt. And the Lord pleads with his people, How long will you remain rebellious? All you have to show for your actions are bruises, welts, and raw wounds. And you have no one to press them out, bandage them, or soften them with oil. And eventually he allowed them to be taken into exile twice. Now, therefore, what do I have here, declares the Lord, seeing that my people have been taken away without cause? Again, the Lord declares, those who rule over them howl, 
and my name is continually blasphemed all day long. What does he mean when he says that his people have been taken away without cause? Even a casual reading of the Hebrew scriptures will demonstrate that Yahweh had a legitimate reason for inflicting discipline on his people. His wrath and their exile was justified, and eventually he will be vindicated. He isn't suggesting here that he didn't have a good reason for allowing his people to be taken away. The matter is a question of the root source behind their capture. From the perspective of human history, Israel's enemies were efficient cause of her injuries and calamity, but from the perspective of God's sovereignty, he claims to be the sole agent of her difficulties. They were taken away according to his will, not the will of man. Israel's enemies were nothing more than a willow switch in his hand. One day, Israel will finally know who it was that actually punished her. The word on the street is that Yahweh is weak and unable to protect his people, which is the cause of his bad reputation. One day, however, God will prove otherwise. The Lord himself tells us that his name is continually being blasphemed all day long. Jesus wants us to pray that this will no longer be the case. Looking at the situation from the outside, the rest of the nations and peoples of the earth became critical of Yahweh. From the outside looking in, Yahweh appeared weak and inept and a poor father figure. Until recently, the Hebrews were living in foreign lands under constant threat of annihilation, and for this reason there remains a widespread belief that Yahweh is unable to protect his people from their enemies. When they came to the nations where they went, they profaned my holy name because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they have come out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations where they went. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It's not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when I prove myself holy among you in their sight. Some people claim that God is done with Israel. His salvation plan has moved beyond them. But here in Ezekiel 36, God reveals his plan and purpose to vindicate the holiness of his great name. He tells them that he's not taking these steps for their sake, but for his own sake. He's going to act on his own behalf and for his own reasons. He wants the nations to know that he alone is the sovereign source and cause of all history moving it along as he wills and according to his own plans in order to bring glory and honor to his own name. In the following passage, Ezekiel records what steps God will take in order to disabuse the nations of this incorrect conclusion. For I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. You will live in the land that I gave to your forefathers, so you will be my people and I will be your God. Moreover, I will save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the grain and multiply it, and I will not bring a famine on you. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the produce of the fields, so that you will not receive again the disgrace of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. I'm not going to do this for your sake, declares the Lord God. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, telling them to ask the Father to vindicate the holiness of his name. 
Here in Ezekiel, God reveals the steps he plans to take in order to accomplish this purpose. When they came to the nations where they went, they profaned his holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they have come out of his land. So, God will bring them back to their own land. Formerly, when the house of Israel was living in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. So God will cleanse them from all of their idols, giving them a new heart and a new spirit. Punishment is no longer necessary because the people will be transformed on the inside, causing them to walk in his statutes. They will be careful to observe his ordinances. They will live in the land he gave their forefathers, living in truth as the people of God. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful to your own studies. If you did, please click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.